first of all, thank you all for coming. Um, I know this is the last talk before the lunch break, so um, I hope I can make this as interesting as possible and have you not all running out and, and grab the food. Um, this is the name, as I said, it's bring your own code and bring your own container. My name is Matthias Häusler. I'm from Novatech Consulting. That's a consulting company in southern Germany. So, yeah, quickly about myself. Um, to the right, this is like the suit and tie version of me that you don't really get to see very often. But I guess as a consultant, you're supposed to have such a profile picture. Um, what I'm doing in my regular job is like, I would say, cloud native consulting. So I help clients to do migrations to the cloud from their legacy applications or start greenfield approaches on microservice development and um, bringing that onto a platform. Besides that, on a community level, I'm running the Cloud Foundry meetup in the area of Stuttgart. So is there anybody from Germany or Switzerland in the room? Oh, quite a few. OK. So if you ever happen to come by, just let me know, and um, I'll try to make sure we can set something up. Um, besides that, I'm also teaching cloud native development on two local universities. I don't have a photo from that. And if you want to reach out to me, you can. that's, that's my, my Twitter handle down there. So what is this going to be about? Um, I'm pretty sure you have seen those two symbols today, maybe yesterday or the day before that. Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, it seems to be one of the hot topics at the moment. And um, I'm basically using both in, in most of the um, activities in my daily job or like an, also in educational level. So today, I would like to give a bit of an introduction on both of the technologies um, and compare them side by side. So you've probably seen there are many, many talks around that topic on the schedule for the CF Summit. And you will probably see various variations of like running them side by side and one on top of the other and integrated and whatsoever. Um, so this, this uh, comparison that I'm going to do is going to be more like on an isolated level. And um, now, last year in Basel, it was announced that Cloud Foundry now is basically being uh, split into like an application runtime, which is the former Cloud Foundry in itself, and the new container runtime, which is the Kubernetes-based um, architecture. I still, I'm still struggling to adapt to those terms, and most likely I will always fall back and say Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes throughout this talk. So when I'm talking about Cloud Foundry, then I'm basically talking about the application runtime. And whenever I say um, Kubernetes, that's basically pointing to the container runtime. OK, so first, of, before we start uh, getting into details, uh, just a little disclaimer what this talk will not be about. So it it's basically can be seen as a bit of a complementary talk to what Dr. Nick just said. So um, this one will not be about infrastructure components and things like what is the footprint of my installation, how many VMs do I need, and how do they like fail over and scale and all that. So it's, it doesn't really go below the, the container level. And this is also not going to be about things which are outside of, of out of the box. So I know there are many extensions and add-ons on both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, but it's going to be hard to make a comparison if you include all of them. So it's really fo like focusing on the core functionality of both technologies without any vendor-specific implementation and um, without any extensions. So what it really is about is about the end user experience. So this is my end user. This end user has an application and wants to bring this application to the cloud. So the things we're going to look at is, first of all, how difficult or what steps are kind of involved to deploy the application. And then I have, of course, certain expectations to the platform. And um, this will basically cover the various aspects of it. So like, how does things work with automatic recovery in case of when my application crashes? Um, how does scaling or auto scaling work? Um, logging is, all, of course, a big topic if you scale also aggregated logging. And how do I bind services to my application? 
what, how can I patch an application that is failing without basically exposing any downtime to the end user, so like zero downtime deployment, and what kind of runtimes do I have supported for my application? So given that I only have half an hour, I mo will most likely not be able to cover all of those things, um, but I'll try to put in as, as, as much as I can. So before I demo, um, I want to give a bit of a high-level introduction to basically the, the, the basics of, of both concepts. Um, this is like a beginner levels talk, at least uh, the way it was flagged, so I'll make sure I'll have everybody in, in, on the same page. So this is the bit I would think people are, should be familiar with, um, how the way how Cloud Foundry works is like I execute a CF push command. What then will actually happen is that my application will go into the Cloud Foundry uh, framework, so to say. Um, a container will be built, a build pack will be placed. Build pack basically means a runtime that supports the um, implementation language of my application, and that will be wrapped into a container image um, and then be treated as an, as an immutable, uh, immutable artifact. So worth to note is like, from an end user perspective, I, I don't really see the container level unless I really want to. So my interaction point is really the, the application level. Um, additionally, a very important concept, I have the split between applications and services. So um, once I have deployed my, my application, I can bind them to, to the services. In this case, I try to like, make an example with a database or, or a messaging system. Okay, so, and once it is deployed, forgot about that, basically I, I'm gonna get a route or a URL to access my application. So, now on Kubernetes, um, if you're coming from a Cloud Foundry world and um, start with Kubernetes, that is, was at least how it was for me a, a while ago, it's, it's two different steps that you have to do there. Um, so if you have your app, in the first place, you have to build a container image by yourself. So you basically need a base container image and a runtime or a base container image which already has that runtime. So normally we specify that through a Docker file that would create your container, put the runtime inside, and um, also the application. So seen from that, you have more different points where you have to interact because you have to provide the image, you have to provide the runtime, and you have to provide the app. That also means you have much more control of how these things are gonna be handled. In the end, um, you will have to kind of push this to some kind of a container registry. This is where all the, the, the images are being stored. Now, part two, this is really about the focus on, on Kubernetes. Um, the equivalent to a CF push would basically be a kubectl run, and um, kube, Kubernetes has a lot more objects, um, and I want to describe a few and, and, and how, they are, how they work internally. So the, the smallest scalable unit in, in the Kubernetes world is a pod, and basically this, this pod can run more, one or more containers inside. What it basically needs is that application register, uh, that container registry that I've shown before, and um, so it will pull the container from the registry, place it in the pod. As I said, Potentially, you could run more than one containers in a pod. That's a significant difference um, to, to Cloud Foundry. Um, you would need that in case you have really shared um, uh, file system things that you have between the containers, or in other words, to put it, if the two containers are not allowed to be deployed on, on multiple different nodes, then you basically should group them within a pod. If, if you don't, uh, you should stick to a one-on-one -on -one mapping. Um, for the sake of like, the comparison of today, we'll stick to like a one-to-one -one mapping of an application with a pod. Now, in order to scale the pods to multiple instances, the object that you need is, is being called a replica set. So a replica set will basically control the amount of your, um, of your pods and the way they are being scaled. The top level object in this diagram is a so-called deployment. A deployment is, is what you need when you want to update or change the behavior of your, of your pod or of your application. Um, then the deployment will basically take care of multiple replica sets and make sure the transition between them um, works fine. Additionally, to expose 
your application to the end user. So you either need a service or an, or an ingress that's an additional component that will basically ex expose a certain endpoint to your user. So you can also see quite a, a few difference in here um, compared to Cloud Foundry. I mean, there's, there's more. You, you can configure and you can, more, you can do more on a granular way. And um, also, there is nothing like um, the concept of, of a build pack or a, um, a separation between application and services. Everything is being treated as a container. It's just a different abstraction layer. In Kubernetes, you deal with the containers. In Cloud Foundry, you deal with, with the applications. And um, that is a, a significant difference, basically, seen from the end user. OK, so let me jump into the demo. Um, I hope that the, the demo guards are with me. Um, and you can see this fine. So, but before I start, uh, just maybe I have to speed up on one or the other side. Who of you has already pushed an application to Cloud Foundry? Okay, that's good. Who of you has already pushed an application to Kubernetes? Uh, there's a little less. So that's what I, what I expected. I'm, I mean, I, I'll try to cover both, um, but I try to speed up a little bit on the, um, on the Cloud Foundry side. So I have this very simple Spring Boot application. Um, that doesn't really do much. Uh, it has two um, REST endpoints exposed. There's like a hello endpoint, which would just say hello world, and additionally have a piece of the host name inside. So that basically is required to see that the application is actually scaling and using different instances. And below that, I have a, an endpoint which I call fail, and what that one basically does, it's basically triggering a kill of the, JV, of the JVM and causes the application to crash. And that's basically what I need to demonstrate um, the, the, the failure behavior of, of the platforms. So now, in case you can't see it, just let me know. I'll try to increase the font, but I also have to, to put a lot of information with into, into the screen, so that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. We start with the Cloud Foundry side. Um, this is a manifest which is basically kind of a deployment descriptor for an application in Cloud Foundry. So the application is called Simple Web. Um, initially, I wanna run that with, in, with three instances, and the most important part is basically this is the jar file of the application that I have just built. Um, the memory is actually an optional component, but I had to tweak this a little because I try to run that all here on my local machine because I didn't really trust the network, and uh, I wanted to exclude that. So the magic command, you know, all know that, is basically CF push, and um, that will basically try to take its course, so now it's gonna download that, um, that build pack, build that internal container, and, and do its thing. So in the meantime, I'm gonna switch over to, um, to the Kubernetes side, and as I said, the, the first thing you gotta do is um, build your container. So. I have a Docker file that I have prepared for that. Um, what this one will do, it will take as a, a base image that already has an operating system layer and a JDK included. It will create a directory for my application. It will copy my application in there and then basically have a command to start the application. So I'll do the Docker build command and I'm, I'm gonna call this uh, image simple web in the version 0.1. So in this case, now it has built my image, my image is there, and um, we're, we're ready to move forward. In the meantime, let's see how things look like on the, on the Cloud Foundry side. Um, I'm gonna split my screen here a little. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a watch command, and I need to decrease the font a little here. So you can see down here, and I hope you can read it, um, we have three running instances of my application. So the two things that I wanted to cover with deployment and scaling, this already went pretty well. Now, in order to, to, to track that they are really there and really working, I'm gonna set up a while loop where I basically, I'm just gonna increase that a little too, where I do a curl on this hello endpoint and repeat that pretty much every second. So you can now see, um, the application is responding, and, and you can also see that we have an, like an alternating ID in front of it, 
that means the load balancer also kicks in and uh, basically has some own alg algorithm in which he places the load on the, on the various instances of my, um, of my application. Now, what we also want to do, as I said before, is basically fail the application and see how the platform copes with that and recovers. Um, to do that, I invoke the other endpoint. This is the, the fail endpoint. And once I executed that, um, you can only see it looking here that this instance of the application went into starting mode. If you look at like my, my end user doesn't see anything about that. So it, Cloud Foundry has detected that this, this instance has failed. It basically re took it out of the equation and it's not gonna route any traffic to that until it, it's, it's basically back. So I'll try to do that a little bit more to actually see, that, to show you that, this, that I'm talking the truth. Um, you can see now from the ID that it's only one ID that the load balancer routes the traffic to because all the other ones um, are currently not running and as soon as they are back, like now, it starts um, iterating over those again. Okay, so let's try to do the same thing over on, on Kubernetes side. Um, I will also do a watch command here and what I'm gonna watch is um, all the objects that I was talking about before, like a deployment, resource sets, pods, and services. So doing this, right now I don't have, have anything except an, an internal service. And I will now run a deployment using that kubectl, I'm gonna make it a little bigger, run command. I could also use um, like a deployment file in a similar way. Um, so this is just an option. I will, I'll, maybe if I have the time, I'll show both. But so what, what I basically do, I start this one with one replica. Um, then I have to point to that image that I have initially built. This label is optional, but I'm just gonna add that because that might make my life easier later on. And if I hit that, you can see that a, lot, a couple of things are happening above here. So I now have a pod running, um, I have a replica set running, and I have a deployment running, just in the way that I expected that. Now, if I start now to do a similar thing and run a while loop, I forgot something, yeah. That, it's, it's nothing that's responding yet, because um, the piece I forgot is I have to expose this one as a service. So, um, I expose this deployment called SimpleWeb um, as a service of type load balancer and expose that to port 8080. And as soon as I have done that, you will see that my, um, my, my curl will get some responses and the application works fine. So on, I'm just gonna wanna move then a little bit. You can see now here as well, I, I'm also gonna decrease the, the font a little bit. So we have now a service on the bottom, which is called Simple Web Service um, with a load balancer and the external IP I'm pointing to is localhost on 8080. Additionally, I wanna scale this service too. Um, now, one of the things that I want to demonstrate here real quickly, because in, initially I said if that the replica set is actually the component in Kubernetes that controls the replicas of, um, of the application. So that the, the, the error I made in the first place was I tried to scale the replica set. And if I'm gonna, no. So if I try to scale this replica set now, it will actually tell me the replica set has scaled. Now, I don't see anything about that when I look into my, my objects. And the reason for that is um, the dependencies of the objects in Kubernetes. So if I, I, I could, for example, build a pod on its own and the replica set on its own and connect to that and, and scale that then. But in that construction that I have with the deployment, basically the deployment overrules the replica set. And if the replica set increases the, 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 in, 
um, desired count, it will be basically set back by the deployment. So this is one thing you, you, you gotta know, and then basically means if you scale the deployment, this will do the trick for you, and you can see now that we basically gone up to um, three instances all there. On the other side, you can see here, we have a few um, returns that didn't go well, but as soon as all the applications are up, we can also see that by the alternating IDs now, um, the, the behavior is, is just the same. So the load balancer works, it balances between the various pods running in my environment, and does everything I need. Now, one thing that I wanna, wanna show here as well is Um, failing the application, of course. So I'm gonna do a curl call to this failing backend, and you may, sometimes you can see that one of the instances, basically, if it hits the one that is right, but it is pointing to right at the moment, um, go, uh, then you don't you get an, an, an empty reply. But another thing that you see is basically when the service is already coming back, you get another one of these. And um, what you have to configure here additionally is the so-called readiness check. The readiness check will, conf will base, is like, like a monitoring mechanism that Kubernetes uses to say this application is actually ready and only if it's ready, I'm gonna route the traffic to it. And to configure that, I have to, I will copy some um, code out of here because it's too much to type for me now and as I'm limited on time. Now, one of the cool things that I really liked is um, that you, the way you can edit a live configuration. I don't know what that, that does all the time. So, kubectl has this edit command, and you can edit all the objects that you're basically dealing with. So I'm, I'm gonna edit the deployment object, and that gives you a YAML notation, which is the, like, the same thing as that you can use initially to, to deploy everything. And this is basically a live snapshot of your, of your running environment. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna um, put this readiness probe in that I just edit. Just have to fix the notation here. And as soon as I write to that file, um, the new configuration will basically kick in. And what you can see here now is that it creates a new replica set. So it basically creates a new, a new container image with a new, with a new configuration. Well, not a new container image, but a, but a new configuration object. And we have like five concurrent pods at the moment. So it will do like a, um, a, a zero downtime deployment of that, of that new configuration and um, you can also see that from the changing ID right here, um, this basically has taken over and um, I've added the configuration live without any downtime. So, what is the time? Um, I, have, I, have, I need to hurry up a little bit. So the final thing that I want to show is then basically, um, now if I have done that and try to fail the application again, um, you still have that every now and then that a single application, but the readiness, you, know, you can see the application is running, but for a moment it was not ready. So that was the change to what we've done before and can kill another one. Um, and you can see that now, uh, this one will probably go into like um, a, a crash loop and back off for a second, but the, the, the router will not route any traffic anymore. And so I pretty much have the same experience that I have, uh, have shown with, with Cloud Foundry before, and it, it, it checks for the right endpoint of the application and um, it interprets the readiness in the right way. So what we additionally would like to do is then basically fix the code and say, okay, I'm updating this one, call this hello world not version two, and take this bad call out of the, um, um, out of the code. Now, I don't, I'm gonna skip the process of building another container. I have already prepared that and have an image with version two available. So I, I will do the, um, the same thing, just adding the deployment. And in there, in this case, I would have to 
specify the other version of my image. Okay, and what basically, same thing happened again. So we have like this, this dynamic uh, rollout of the, of, the new, of the new image. It creates a new replica set still under the umbrella of the old deployment object. And you can see now that it basically has switched. So we're switching from version one to version two. Um, the end user will not have any outage there. And if I do the, the failing call now, it will just return fixed. So um, this has basically patched the, um, the application. Now, I'm gonna skip the steps to do this update on the Cloud Foundry side. Um, essentially, what you do there is you push a new application and then you basically move the routes from one application to the other. So it's like a three-step process, new application, map the route and unmap the route because I'm, I'm seeing um, that I need to look on, on the time and um, just trust me, this, this, this is gonna work. <laughs> Okay, so a quick summary of what I try to show is, uh, I'm, I'm, of course I couldn't cover everything, but I will show you later on, I have a, a write-up of all those steps, so if you wanna try it yourself, you, you certainly can. So on, on the Kubernetes side, um, the things I really liked is that you, this live editing of the configuration and that this, this will update without any downtime. Of course, it's also really, um, powerful to have this large function scope. So you have many different objects you can configure a lot and tweak in turn um, on, on various levels in a very granular way. I also listed this as like a, a disadvantage because you have that really big configuration scope and that means you have to deal with it. Um, additionally, compared to Cloud Foundry, you have also a lot higher skill requirement because you're not only dealing with your applications, but you need to know something about Docker to, or like another container runtime which is supported, but anyway, you have to build your container image and you, know, you need to have the skill to, to operate Kubernetes. Now, handling of containers, as I just said, um, this has a, a bit, uh, definitely an overhead. I mean, right now in this example, it was pretty straightforward, but in reality, it means you, have, you need a process to build your containers. You need a process basically to bring your containers into a container registry and, and then um, handle your images, patch your images, and so on. Now, on the Cloud Foundry side, the, um, the big advantage is like the, the simplicity. Also, I put that in, in hyphens and say, like, it's like, it acts containerless. So the beauty of it is what I see, um, that it has the power of containers. It uses the containers initially, but um, it kind of shields the end user from the disadvantages of all the container handling. It is very fast to deploy. Um, so I think if you have an application that depends on a build pack which exists and connects to a backend that you have in your, in your services, there's, it's difficult to find a way that how can you deploy an application to the, um, to the platform uh, quicker. The, the downsides here are also the build packs. I mean, the build, the build packs are very powerful, but if, if, if you happen to come to like a code base that there's no supporting build pack, then that advantage quickly goes away. If you look at it from a Kubernetes perspective, it's definitely a, limit, a limited configuration scope. Um, the blue-green deployment is something that works um, in Cloud Foundry, but it not in the same automated way as it does in, uh, in Kubernetes. I mean, I don't know if, if you've seen that keynote this morning with the CF better push. So, okay, this point is basically not valid anymore, but uh, I, I, I didn't know about that un, un, until then. And um, so stateful workloads is something that I haven't brought up here as an example, but that's basically the, the, the thing that, we, that has been talked about a lot before, that, which is basically a, definitely a reason why you wanna, would look at, at Kubernetes. So now, to wrap things up, if you look to Kubernetes from a Cloud Foundry perspective, it's, it's, some, I would summarize in a way, it's basically you can do and you, and you can configure more, but in turn, you also have to do and know more to, to do the things right. Um, if you look at the other way, if you come from Kubernetes and look at Cloud Foundry, you might want to say it's like it's very easy to handle, but 
does it really give me all I need? And this is basically the assessment that you have to do if you evaluate between the two platforms. And now, in the end, I mean, my wish that would make my life as a consultant easier then is um, something with a functional scope of Kubernetes and the simplicity of, of Cloud Foundry. And um, I've just been over to um, Jules Friedman's talk um, about one attempt to integrate them. I know there are many, and I think the general tendency is going in the right direction, and I'm definitely looking forward to see what that brings. Now, last, basically last slide. So if you want to reach out to me, if you have any more questions, feel free to, to ping me on Twitter. I don't really, I don't tweet too much, but I respond to the messages. Now, one thing I wanted to show you um, on my GitHub account, there is, I have the, the repository pinned right here. I called it CF versus Kate. Now, in there, I have detailed instructions of basically all the steps that I did today. So if we look, for example, into that Kubernetes part, um, I described the, the steps to set up the watch, run the image, and I have a lot more alternatives um, built in there. So if you want to repeat that, if things went a little bit too fast today, which I can understand, then you can look into that and try re to repeat it yourself. I mean, I have a, like an explanation for building the service, for dockerizing it, for playing with Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. And um, however, it does not explain how to get to the platform. This is the part that you have to do yourself. Now, and yeah, again for the meetup, whenever you come to, if everybody of you comes to lovely Stuttgart, feel free to ping me and I will tell you if something's going on. If you have an interesting story to share, I'll be happy to set a meetup up with you and, and place you as a speaker then. So with that, I would say thank you very much. I'm going to release you all for lunch now. In case you still have any questions, come and see me.